Everyone is talking about Vice President Kamala Harris's running mate, a Minnesota progressive governor, Tim Walz, who formally accepted the invitation to run as the Democratic Party's nominee for vice president at a major rally in Philadelphia. Joining me live for discussion is the U.S. Report host, James Morrow. Hi there, James. Uh, so VPs historically don't really matter, as in they don't affect the results of the election um, historically. But what about this time round? Well, I think this time there's a lot more focus on Tim Waltz for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is such a weird and historic time here. You know, two weeks ago, a little over two weeks ago, Kamala Harris stepped up to essentially be the new nominee, although that hasn't been formally confirmed yet until the convention uh, of the Democrats. And so her vice presidential pick is brand new. We've only just met him. And I'll tell you what, we're learning a lot of things here that are really, really concerning about his record, uh, what he's been up to, and also claims about military service that he didn't necessarily actually undertake. So you think that that will affect the credibility of the campaign? Yeah, look, it affects it a whole lot of ways. You know, Josh Sapiro, uh, the governor of Pennsylvania, was supposed to be, everybody said he was going to be the pick. Uh, Pennsylvania has 19 electoral votes, as Annalise was just saying there. But there's a problem. Josh Shapiro is Jewish. And for the Democrats, who are the party of, you know, tolerance and inclusion, well, that was just too much for them uh, because, of course, they've got this whole Hamas wing of the party that's exceedingly pro-Palestine, and they didn't want somebody Jewish on the top of the ticket. Go figure. So they ditched him. They've gone with Tim Waltz, and now everybody's digging through his records. Um, this is a guy who, during the pandemic, let BLM rioters torch his city, his biggest city in his state, while also setting up a Dobbin line so that people could, you know, call in violations uh, of their neighbors during lockdown. He's very, very, very pro the whole transgender movement and that that whole thing. You know, he included, including he even passed legislation and proudly signed legislation forcing schools to put tampon dispensers in boys' bathrooms. So figure that one out. He's got a lot of very strange links to China, including going to China on his honeymoon during uh, the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. But now there's also word coming out that he claimed a rank he didn't have in the National Guard and claimed service in Afghanistan that he didn't do during the global war on terror. And now people are saying, who is this guy? And I think clearly the thing is, is that they didn't check him out. They didn't have time to check him out. They needed a candidate. And they thought, oh, well, let's just put the 60-year-old, you know, goofy white guy he's relatable in to balance the ticket. And hopefully, you know, we'll get uh, white middle-aged voters who are pro-Trump and down on Kamala. I mean, it was incredibly patronizing to do such a pick in such a manner. Um, and now, of course, they've got a huge number of problems that they've got to answer about this guy. But of course, you don't even need to do much digging um, to scrutinise Trump in, a, in not even a comparable way. Um, what do you make of the Trump camp's response to the Democratic ticket, um, well, you know, I... calling him extremist? Well, he is extremist. I mean, this is a guy who said, let's not be ashamed of the word socialism. You know, I mean, and at the same time, we haven't seen him answer any questions. We haven't seen him do a press conference. So Kamala is Trump Harris... extremist? What's that? I think I think does that I make think, Trump I, uh, extremist? No, I don't think he's extremist at all. I think you know the things that Trump uh, is for, you know, like a strong border, anti-illegal immigration. These are th you know, things that are pretty normal mainstream sort of things. I'm not sure putting tampon machines in boys' bathrooms is exactly, you know, normal behavior. But that's just me. So, you know, just to go back to the point about uh, the Democratic ticket. We haven't seen Kamala Harris give a press conference for 16 days now. I think 17 days. She's answered precisely one question. Um, Tim Waltz has run from the press. There is no media scrutiny allowed by this, uh, this campaign. They are literally trying to do a hiding in the basement routine, just like Joe Biden did in 2020. This, it's not acceptable. And I mean, you want to talk extreme, that's extreme. What do you think Trump's going to say at the uh, Montana rally this Friday? 
Well, I think we're going to hear a lot of the same stuff that we always hear from him. You're going to hear uh, his standard uh, lines, but I think you're going to see a big line of attack on Tim Waltz, who presents a, just a huge target for the Republicans. This guy is, you know, he was a dud as governor. Uh, tomorrow night on the U.S. Report, we're going to have people from Minnesota who lived through his governorship, talk about how crime went up, school results went down, uh, and people started fleeing the state under his leadership because it was so bad. This is a guy who's up for vice president. He's, he's going to hit all of those themes. And, you know, again, where are these people? Kamala Harris hasn't answered any questions, hasn't done a tough interview since becoming the nominee. Uh, Tim Waltz, he hasn't done a sit-down. He's not answering questions. Um, it's all very, very bizarre.